Good morning everyone! On this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be dissecting an op report or an operative report, medical report. This is the document you will be reading to figure out what procedures were done and what needs to be coded in the ICD-10 PCS or Procedural Coding System code book. It's going to be a lot of fun and I wanted to do this type of setup so you can see how I read through an op report and highlight and make notes so I know what information is pertinent to build my code. So I cover all my bases and make sure that I am coding to the highest degree of specificity and I don't miss any detail. So enjoy reading the very first op report we'll be doing. Okay, so here is our op report. This is an example from one of my workbooks for one of my PCS coding courses. And as you can see at the top of the note, it says do not code intraoperative fluoroscopic guidance with this procedure. We are going to ignore that because this is the same example that I used in a previous PCS coding video and I will also make another video with this example of how we actually code within the book. So we're just going to ignore that. So it says the procedure, placement of a dual chamber pacemaker. So this is information we can already highlight because it's telling us what device is being inserted. And then the indications just give a little bit more information on the diagnosis. We can skip over that. Now actually reading the procedure description, it says after informed consent, the patient is brought to the lab. The procedure is done under conscious sedation, fluoroscopic guidance. We want to remember that information because there is fluoroscopic guidance being used, which means we will need a code for that imaging assistance. 1% lidocaine was used to anesthetize the skin under the left clavicle and subcutaneous pocket. We need to remember this information because they are making an incision near the left cl clavicle in the subcutaneous tissue and fascia and was made for the pacemaker generator and leads. So that is where the pacemaker generator is going to be inserted and the leads will connect to that generator. The left subclavian vein was cannulated twice using a micropuncture set. The subclavian vein is giving us our approach of how they're going to get to the heart which was upsized to regular 035 wire, the position of which was confirmed under fluoro. So again, confirming that they're using the fluoroscopic guidance to get from the left subclavian vein to the heart. And as far as information on the puncture set and the wire, we don't need to know that information. That is all information that is integral to the procedure, so that does not need a separate code. A seven French sheath and a seven French right ventricular lead this is giving us a clue as to where they're going, was used and placed in the right ventricular apex. So this is where they are bringing the leads to place them on the right ventricular apex. Originally and then more proximally in the inferior wall, yes, they moved from the apex of the right ventricle to the inferior wall, but they stayed within the ventricle, which PCS defines as its own separate body part character. The numbers were suboptimal, including the R-wave sensing. I then moved the lead to the right ventricle mid to upper septum. So again, they're moving it, but they're staying within the right ventricle. The numbers were better. There was no diaphragmatic stimulation and the lead was sutured down. This was an active fixation lead. The right atrial lead was then placed. This is where the second lead was placed. So we know that it's going to the right atrium. Right atrium is defined in PCS as a separate body character, meaning there will be two separate codes one for the right ventricle and one for the right atrium. Using a seven French sheath under fluoroscopic guidance, again, we need to remember fluoroscopic guidance, so they use fluoro for both inserting and attaching the right ventricle and the right atrium lead. The numbers look good, there was no diaphragmatic stimulation and the lead was sutured down. The leads were then attached to the generator, so we know that is going to be attached to the generator, which was sutured down in the pocket. Highlight generator in the pocket, so we know that the generator portion or component of this procedure was done in the subcutaneous tissue and fascia under the left clavicle. So that is also a separate code because we are now in a separate body system, the subcutaneous tissue and fascia. Wound irrigated with antibiotic and inspected for hemostasis and closed in layers. Patient tolerated the procedure well without any complications. Okay, to summarize, we have four different codes. The first code, we know that for the, both of the leads in the right ventricle and the right atrium are insertion because we are inserting a device or the lead. So our root operation is insertion. 
the body part is the right ventricle. Same thing with our second code, insertion, right atrium. Both devices are the pacemaker lead. And with both of those, our approach will be percutaneous because percutaneous is defined as a small incision, usually with a needle or an IV of sorts. There isn't a big incision being made. And then they are inserting their tools within that small needle going up through the left subclavian vein to the heart. So they needed fluoroscopic guidance to guide them to the heart, so percutaneous is what we need to use. For our third code, that will be for the generator in the subcutaneous tissue and fascia, that pocket that they made. That is also insertion because the generator is a device and that is in the subcutaneous tissue and fascia, which is a completely separate body system. And this is for the case maker generator. And then with this one, I'm going to say the approach is open because as I was reading it, it seemed like they had to do a somewhat larger incision so they could open up the skin to see within the pocket and place the generator. If there are any coders out there that say it should be percutaneous, let me know and explain to me why so I understand the reasoning. And then for our final code is the fluoroscopic guidance. So that will be in the imaging section and we'll put fluoro. And then we know that the fluoroscopic guidance was only used for getting the leads to the right side of the heart, right ventricle, right atrium. So we know it's right heart. And then I will have another video of actually looking at the book. This is the same exact setup of a previous video I did where you saw me talking about this. I will have another video of looking at the book and going through the same exact example. So you can look at that previous video and you can get a little bit more information of how I explained some of these things. So right now we have our four codes and once we are to actually go into the tables, then we could fill in the rest of our information. But we have to remember, as we're going through all of these op reports, we know that we're looking for our root operation, which is insertion. We know that we're looking for a body part, which is what is being worked on or where the device is being placed. So we know that it's in the right ventricle, right atrium, and then subcutaneous tissue and fascia. And that will be also in the chest region. And we also know the approach of how they got to that body part. And then we also know what devices were being placed. So that is how I dissect an op report. We'll find in a lot of my workbooks, I will have a lot of writing on the margins of each op report because this is the information that I'm putting in there. And then you will also have to put these codes in the correct sequence, which in the previous video I talked about the sequence, so you'll learn more about that. So I suggest when you're learning, do this. Highlight all of that information you need to build your code. It will make it so much easier for reading and understanding op reports in the future, and especially the ones that can be very long. I will make a video on a long one just so we can see how much information we really don't need that is already integral to the procedure, that is already assumed that it's part of the procedure, so it doesn't need a separate code. So that is my process of how I read through op reports and I literally dissect it by highlighting the information I know I will need to fill in my code. I suggest you do the same with all of your practice procedures and exercises, doing that same process of highlighting, making notes. You will then become very good at putting that information in the correct order of how it is shown in, the, in your code. So when you get to the table, all you need to do is just fill in which numbers and letters are needed to make that code complete. It is very easy and it is so much fun. So I suggest practicing, reading as many procedures and op reports as you can. There are examples online. The different associations have practice books, just books full of all sorts of different procedures. Do that and get good at it get comfortable with it. So when you are finally in a professional setting as a certified coder, you will feel very comfortable in reading op reports, no matter how complicated, how short, how long they are. It is fantastic. So I will see you all later. Bye!